topics, inside scoop, and all your favorite stuff. Now, here's Wendy. I'm doing fine. I mean, we've got another great show. I hope that you enjoy the comic stylings and acting of Gabare Sidibe, because she's here. I love Gabare. You know, she's starring on that hit Showtime show. It's called The Big C. And of course, she was, or she is, an Oscar nominated. Uh, she was Oscar. Uh, <laughs> She was nominated for an Oscar for her role in Precious. And today, we're going to put her acting skills to the test because we've got the most challenging acting role ever. Me and Gabourey are going to act out the fight scene between Nene and Sheree. Yeah. Atlanta Housewives reunion. <laughs> Fix that face. A mess. Plus, TV legend Meredith Baxter is here. Yeah. Yo! Remember Meredith, she was the uh, fun-loving mother in the classic uh, sitcom Family Ties. And now Meredith has, is a New York Times best-selling author. She's got this memoir, and in it, it's so good. She's revealing her struggles about an abusive marriage, alcoholism, and coming out of the closet as a full-blown lesbian. So it's going to be great, great conversation with her. And do you love Fashion Police on E! Like I love Fashion Police? Good. Celebrity stylist George Katiopoulos is here, and George is going to give us all the best, or well, his take, take on the best and worst uh, celebrities uh, fashion-wise in Hollywood. And we've got another lucky Wendy audience member today who's going to jump into the uh, Wendy 5000 money booth and, uh, yeah, start grabbing for a chance of grabbing the full $5,000. So let's get started. It's time for Hot Topic. Hundredth episode of Wendy. Again, I'm reminding you this every day because I'm so proud and I'm so happy that you got us to this point. Uh, is May 23rd. It's going to be. It's going to be a wonderful day here at Wendy. If you have tickets to be in my studio audience, May 23rd, you already got the word. Uh, the studio audience is going to be dressed in black tie attire. I'm going to wear a special sparkly dress, and we've got. We, on that particular day, uh, we've got lots of big surprises, and um, I'll tell you more as it gets closer. In the meantime, in the meantime, to celebrate May, I've been, I told you I was going to be giving you a wig a day. <laughs> Yesterday's wig, uh, today's wig, I love. Thank you. I call the short and sassy, and I love it. Um, and I chose this wig because it's off of my shoulders. I'm wearing long sleeves, you know what I mean? And uh, it's perfectly colored. I actually, this is one that I brought from home, and I colored it myself at home. When you use 20 volume, per, I told you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a real wiggy. 20 volume peroxide, and you paint it and, and do it up, and then, and then Antoine curled it and made it nice. Moving along, congratulations to Jessica Simpson, who finally had her baby. You know, I've heard much debate about the little girl's name. First of all, Jessica's a baby girl, nine pounds, 13 ounces, big, and, and her name is Maxwell Drew Johnson, and I love it. I love it. Like, I love when a girl has a boy's name. And they'll, she'll grow up, they'll call her Max. You can, you can see it now, Max Johnson. A Max is always cute. Uh, of course, there are, there's also Maxie as a, a nickname, or MJ. I, lo I love it all. So this uh, forensic artist used a computer and the technology to predict what Max will look like. You want to say? Yes. Cute, right? Beauty queen. Congratulations to Eric and Jessica. I guess 
the next big thing is to get married and or lose the weight. Either way, we're on Jessica Watch. Congratulations again. <laughs> And so, did you guys see Dancing with the Stars last night? No. Not as many people? Well, I can fill you in, it's okay. Did you go to bed early too? Yeah. Yeah, I was reading and then I went to bed. Well, Jalil White got sent home last night. Oh. It was, uh, there was a dance, uh, dance off showdown between Jalil and Rashawn Fagan and uh, Kim's dress. If you could just wear that dress to the club, that white dress one time, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> they had to dance the rumba, and uh, Jalil got sent home. In the end, the judges did vote him off, and uh, we call it, in my, in my house, we call it getting Ralph macchio <laughs> That's when you start out strong, and you're the fan favorite, and then all of a sudden, something goes awry. In Jalil's case, unfortunately, I think the stories that have been in the media have kind of ruined it for him. You know, the story about the, the baby's mother and the abuse and pushing into the toilet, which he told us here that that wasn't true, but they're going to court, probably as we speak. I mean, when he was here a couple of weeks ago, he said, you know, I have to go to court. So, you know, it's probably for the best anyway, Jalil, because like if you go to court and you deal with that and then you got to go dancing with the stars, TMZ and all the cameras will know exactly where to swoop down and get your comment. So it's probably best. Um, good luck with everything. And, and if you're curious about how Jalil reacted to being sent home from dancing with the stars, uh, take a look. Do that. <laughs> so silly. By the way, there is a rumor of Dancing with the Stars doing a Dancing with the Stars All Star Edition. Well, I was watching Kelly uh, and Mario Lopez was uh, was one of the co-hosts last week, and uh, and Mario started the rumor because he said the. Producers were discussing it, but it wasn't an, it was a closed secret. It wasn't an open secret and he talked about it. And then, you know, apparently that he got, he got shut down like shh, shh. So there's gonna be an all-star reunion of some sorts. Well, my phone will be off the hook. Not that you, not that you'd be calling me anyway. Uh, Kim K is busy with Kanye West. Michael, my friend, Michael Bolton might not answer. Kate Gosling is busy with her kids and Buzz Aldrin is all danced out. <laughs> but good luck with the All-Stars dancing with the stars. <laughs> By the way, Mother's Day is my favorite holiday of all. Have I ever shared that with you? It's just very random. It's just very random, but you know, I know Mother's Day is coming and I was watching the news this morning and the newscasters were talking about, well, have you made your reservations for dinner or have you placed your order for your mom? They were ribbing one another. And I was like, I think I love Mother's Day because I don't give anybody the business. Like I, I, you, I beg for the day. It's a very special honor to be a mother and have a Mother's Day. I don't like gifts. I don't like anything except for peace and quiet and I'm not cleaning the kitchen. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but, <laughs> but back. Back to the action, because I have to tell you about Naomi Campbell's new reality show. Oh. I said Naomi Campbell's new reality show. <laughs> it's gonna be a good one, I'm so watching it. It's called The Face. <laughs> it's gonna be like America's Next Top Model. And it'll be good because Naomi is not the type that you can control. If you can control it, of course, she wouldn't have such bad behavior. I want to I wanna see wig tilting, cursing out. I want to see phones being flinged, tempers being flared. You can imagine how she's going to treat her contestants. You know, Tyra's all nice with it. Naomi's going to get in their necks. Um, and then, and then I have a suggestion for this um, show, Naomi and producers. I think that the judges should be... Claudia, Cindy, and Linda Evangelista from back in the day. Now, I'm sure that Naomi is not willing to share the judges table, but keep in mind, Naomi, you'll be the one sitting in the middle with the cards. I have three cards in my hand. <laughs> one of you are going home. Anyway, I'm watching this show. It's gonna be on Oxygen. They haven't told us exactly when it's gonna start, but can I make a suggestion, Oxygen? Put it anywhere except on a Sunday night, because our dance card is full on Sunday night. Thank you. So, it's been a while since we talked about that Jersey Shore spinoff, because every time we talk about a Jersey Shore person, we talk about Snooki and being pregnant. Well, 
uh, it's Jay Wow and Snooki show. You already know they're getting their own. They're going ahead with the plans for their own reality. Snooki is so short, right? <laughs> The show is going to highlight their lives living together as best friends over in Jersey City. And we have a sneak peek. Do you want to say? Yeah. Let's take a look. Let's watch. I really need to tell you something. I'm pregnant and engaged. How does this happen? You know what Sex. I, mean? ah! I am moving in with a pregnant, engaged. Snooky. It's moving? It's moving. Oh my god, it's so awesome. Honestly, I really didn't know that I could make a baby. So the fact that I can reproduce is very scary. <laughs> I mean, what more can you say? On a side note, though, um, I know it's not just me. Jay Wow has skirted around this hole. She didn't get plastic surgery. That's all she ever says. No, I haven't gotten anything done but my boobs. I haven't gotten any. Well, let's bring out the Wendy Willistrator yeah. to get a closer look. seen you in so long, Willistrator. Okay, let's start our experiment, shall we? Yes. Let's take a look at JWoww before. And this is JWoww last week. Wow. <laughs> but all you got done were your boobs, right, JWoww? How about what looks like a lot of injectable filler on your cheeks? Let's not forget the trout mouth on the lips. Let's not forget what looks like a slight lift to give you more dramatic up here. You're so young, I can't believe you got a lift on your forehead. Um, and of course, there's a nose job, and there's tons of Botox everywhere. <laughs> and I'm not one to hate. This is, this is all alleged. This is according to my opinion. However, let's do a side by side. And I must say, you weren't a bad looking woman to begin with. And, and, and you, you're not a bad looking woman now. It's just that to deny is to allegedly lie to us. Anyway, but good luck on your show with Snooki. And the show starts uh, June 21st on MTV. So you guys be watching and keep it here too. Up next, we've got Oscar nominated actress Gabourey Sidibe. She's here. <laughs> I love it. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Tomorrow on Wendy. He's the hottest of the hot brothers. Joe Jonas, revealing dish from a pop music megastar. And a song from a solo CD. Hi, Wendy. Happy 500th show. I loved your book. I loved your voice. I actually love you. You've got my vote. You actually do have the X Factor. And here's to the next 500. Simon. So our first guest is an Oscar-nominated actress whose breakout role in the movie Precious redefined what it means to be a Hollywood it girl. Now she's keeping up with, uh, keeping us entertained with her hit show called on Showtime called The Big C. Take a look. Look, Mr. J, I got you a secret weapon. Is that for the baby? That's so nice. No, it's for you. It's a compression t-shirt. It's like man spanx, guaranteed to make you look thinner and put the lean back in your meat. <laughs> Please welcome the lovely Gabourey Sidibe. <laughs> on the ground, we're gonna give you some shoe cam. Okay. So, <laughs> do, do you normally wear heels? I, I do, I have to, as a part of my job, I hate it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, you look cute today, your jeans Thank and the whole bit. Thank you, I'm doing daytime. You're doing daytime. <laughs> I 
saw in that clip that you were rocking the afro. Now, is that your hair or is that a wig? Oh, no, that was a weave. Um, it was an afro weave, and it's so cute on Andrea. I love it. But as soon as I walked out of the studio, I hated it because I can't control the weave. I can't control an afro. Uh, I need it to swing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I just need it to. I can't do nothing with no afro. Are, are you a long or a short? You're I'm definitely a, a long. I'm a long, too. I mean, it's nice to visit a short, but I'm a long. Yeah. Do you know? So your character on The Big Seek, Gabby's character, came back from Africa, and she uh, brought it brought her back to her roots. For real. <laughs> That's why the afro and the whole bit. Exactly. And she changes her name to a babu. A babu. <laughs> 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 is it true that, that you are part African? Because I didn't realize that. Absolutely. I'm Senegalese. My father's Sen Senegalese. Uh, my mom's from Like Georgia. Akon. Yeah, exactly. And so my mom's just uh, African American, so I'm black and blacker. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. In real life, did you go through that thing at one point in your life where you wanted to embrace your Africanness? Well, well the weird thing, well, being born, you know, half African, I've been to Africa plenty of times. Uh -huh. And so I never had to sort of you know, bring it into myself. It's always been there. Yes, I yes. actually speak Wolof and everything. Which Do is the you? language, yeah. I speak a little Wolof. Can you say how you doing in Wolof? I don't know if I can say how you doing. But, um, like, the greeting is like, Nangadef. My, my father always says Nangadef to me. And the, you say, um, um, Magi Firek. Which Nangadef. is, yeah, which is like, how are you? I'm doing good. Or Sawa. So, okay, uh, how you doing is Sawa. So uh, And you say, so I'll be in. So I'm I'll doing be, good. Okay, so I'll be in. Well, congratulations, by the way. Gabby recently received the Shining Star Award at Dallas's Film Festival. Thank and, you. And, and that award was based on the, the Precious character again. Well, it was based on, I guess, uh, my two-month career. So <laughs> it was based on Precious and Tower Heights and the Big C. And, you know, I have a very little, tiny, young acting career, and they gave me an award for it. Yeah, but in the short time, you've made big strides. I know what she's saying. Like, we've only known you for a few years, but in that few years, you really made a big impact on people. Speaking of big, everything is bigger in Texas. Did you <laughs> celebrate big? I did. All I wanted to do once I went there was I wanted to go gay line dancing because I feel like gay line dancing is much more interesting than regular line dancing. But I talked to my hairstylist of the weekend and he told me about the gayborhood, which is the gay neighborhood. And, and he told me to go to a place called S4 and it was a big drag show. And so I went to a drag show. It was good. You had the best time. I had the best time. It's really okay. So like it's a Oh, there you are. Where? Ooh, I cannot ooh, believe, ooh, I did not know that there was a video until today. Uh, they were like, they were so amped, they were like, what do you want? Do you want to wear a costume? I was like, hell yeah, put me in a costume. Yes. <laughs> you're a fun girl, though. <laughs> I try. You're, you're a really fun girl. So then the last time that you were here, you were telling me um, you have the fly bachelorette pad here in Manhattan, <laughs> and you were smushing with one of your gentleman callers. Like, like you, you have a reg you had a regular, you know, dating and having fun. Are, are you still with him? What the, the funny thing is, <laughs> we broke up before that show even aired. Wow. <laughs> not, that, not that it was like a two-minute relationship. It was like a two-year relationship, but it ran its course. Things happen. You're, yeah. You're young. Yeah. How old are Don't you, Gabby? Don't be sad. I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> how old are you? <laughs> actually, this Sunday is my birthday. And how old are and you? And I'll be 47. Wow. I'm, I'm actually 29 this Sunday. Good for you. <laughs> think of you as being a lot younger than that. So now that you're, you know, the big 2-9 on Sunday, do you have a particular test that you put men through? Because you're thinking more seriously now about your relationships, I guess. A little bit. I will say that I am trouble. Stay away from me. But, but I do, like, for a guy that I'm interested in, I like I like boys, I should say, my mom's always telling me to say men instead of boys. So I like men that have imagination and are fun. And so I usually, if we go on a date, I make them hold my hand and wish on a star. And then I ask them what their wish is. And if their wish isn't imaginative enough, then I know that they're not that interesting. You're a tough date. I'm not, it's not that, it's not that hard to come up with a good wish. <laughs> And what they would do if they had a time machine. Oh. And that's always a fun answer. I'd go back to the 70s because I love disco. What would you do? I would play with... <laughs> that's fine. I would play with my mom as a child. Good. Is that not fun? That's like, my mom's perfect. adorable. Listen, <laughs> hold that thought. More fun with Gabby. Listen, up next, we are going to do Hairpiece Theater. Gabby and I are going to reenact the big fight scene between Sheree and Nene from Housewives of Atlanta reunion. Don't miss it. It's going to be good.
And before we reenacted Line of Housewives, I just want you to know we were talking during the, the commercial break about the various characters, and we both feel the same way about Marlo. Absolutely. <laughs> I said I would put her in a microwave. And send her some <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so since um, since we had such a good time reenacting a classic scene from Atlanta Housewives, the last time you were here, we thought that we'd do Hairpiece Theater today and do a, another classic scene. This time, we're going to act out the fight scene between Sheree and Nene from Atlanta Housewives <laughs> Reunion. Gabby, you're going to play Nene, so put your Nene hair on, <clears throat> and I'm going to play Sheree. <laughs> Wait, I forgot. Wait, hold ooh, on. Ooh, don't let it fall now. Mm -mm, wait, I hold can't. On. <laughs> Get the donkey booty on it. <laughs> Sheree, this is an homage to you. Laugh with us, girl. All right, and no reunion would be complete without... Andy! Andy! <laughs> okay. Ooh, the bumps to hold my wig up are making this fall down. All right. I'm doing the best I can. Okay, look. Um, and... <coughs> Nene! Wait. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nene, you keep saying, I'm rich. I'm running to the bank, cashing Trump checks. I didn't even have to be on the Trump show. I work. <laughs> These are your words. We're not putting words in your mouth. I said it because I was letting you know what time it was. And what time is it, boo? The time use the bleaching. <laughs> you could use a trim down on them doggy teeth. How much you made, Miss Thing? What's your status at the bank? <laughs> you so rich? My kids are not in Walmart shoplifting. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. My kids ain't at Walmart either, honey. Let's not go there, because you ain't squeaky clean. Boo -boo. <laughs> I ain't ashamed. <laughs> I, I ain't ashamed. You better get on the right team, honey. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you this right here. Oh. <laughs> Don't make that face. Fix that body. Fix that face. <laughs> Fix that body. And scene. <laughs> Gabby Ray, put it on. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having That's me. Right, Gabby. Make sure you check her out in the big seat Sunday night at 9.30 on Showtime. Up next from the Fashion Police, we've got George uh, Costi... Oh, God. Costiopolis. Sorry, George. He's here next. We're going to talk fashion. Every day they're taking on the hot topics. So let's talk Katie Couric and each other. If she invites you on her new talk show, would you go on? I think you're more likely to see water run uphill. Don't miss News Anchor Week, all next week on Wendy. The great thing about wigs is that you just pull the hair out and throw it on the ground. <laughs> so the Hollywood Reporter named our next guest one of the 25 most powerful stylists. Ooh. He's also a co-host on one of my favorite shows, Fashion Police. And today he's here to dish on the latest celebrity fashions. Please welcome to our show, George Katsisopoulos. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I was saying it all correct <laughs> right up until that. Katsiopoulos. Yeah, Katsiopoulos. Katsiopoulos. Yeah, it's, 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 it's okay. I, I forgive anyone because it's not. It's it's a mouthful. I listen to Joan say it. I love you on Fashion Police. You're thank such you. a great addition to that show. Thank you. Thank you. And I love, I love it because while um, Joan is making us laugh and Kelly is, is like her, uh, you know, right hand in that, uh, you and Juliana are kind of stoic and you bring it all in. I, I like your role on that show. Thank you, thank you. So who's more stylish out of the three of them? Oh, Wendy. J Joan, Come on. Juliana. That's like, that's like choosing your, you know, your, your, a parent choosing their favorite child. Yeah. I could never do that. Well, they all. They all have different styles. They all have different styles. Okay, so, you know, when Kelly is like the young girl who can experiment with fashion and yeah. have fun yes. and start trends yes. and do crazy things. And Joan, you know, has the bling, has all the Fabulous. jewelry. You know, she's the queen of QVC. We yes. love her for that. You're kind of, you got some bling going on there. Too. Thank you. I noticed it. 
noticed it. I noticed it. And then, you know, Juliana is like, she's like a sexier, maybe dirtier <laughs> Victoria Beckham. <laughs> Comparison. Wears it because she's got an amazing body. She can wear it whatever yeah. she wants. By the way, shout right? out to Juliana. Congratulations on you and Bill and the yes, Baby. Yes. It's so exciting. I, ha I think that I know who I want to sit there while she's out on maternity. <laughs> Kamora Simmons. Yeah. She was so Kimora. good. This, she was really so good. good this past weekend. Yeah, yeah. I saw her there. She was really good. Anyway. Um, Wait, what maternity? Well, Juliana, she's going to have She'll a baby. Bring, I'll just hold the baby while we're shooting. <laughs> bring it on. Bring she's got to take some family time. <laughs> so now, listen, uh, here at the show, we came up with our own version of Fashion Police. Yes, I And love we it. call it CSI, <laughs> Celebrity Style in, uh, Investigation. So let's play. Hit it. Fashion DUIs, celebrities who look like they dressed under the influence. <laughs> Who's our first worst offender? Okay, so first up we have the lovely Nicki Minaj. Okay, she's in London. And all right, it's not like, it's not like, she just is dressing like a toddler. I mean, what is this? It's like a 90s club kid. It's fine, I get it, it's her personality. Yes. You know, it's her persona, but she's dressing like a toddler what do you, think, what do you think she should do because uh, well it's not even what i think that with lady gaga and katie perry and all these girls they're dressing crazy basically it's it's been done and we've become desensitized to it like yeah. the more crazy we see it just be, it's like oh there's just another crazy outfit it's it doesn't it's not fresh it's not interesting like yeah. maybe just <laughs> just go minimalism. You know? Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe like a Chanel die. suit and then a colored wig or Exa something. Exactly. Exa uh, but she looks great. I mean, I love Nikki. She's, I, you know, she anything that makes me smile. I yeah, love. she dares to be different. Okay, who's our next okay. DUI <laughs> offender? Dry, you're gonna, uh, dressing you're gonna the love influence. this. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I was at the Glad Awards a couple weeks ago, uh -huh. and um, Cher presented an award to her son. I know where we're going Jess, with this. And she shows up. <laughs> with this humongous big that afro. stupid afro wig. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> why? <laughs> I mean, I was like, okay, first of all, she's like, it's like Diana Ross's old hair. Like, why, 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 why? But again, it made you smile, so you have to it love it. You, yeah. But why? But why? She's Cher. I mean, I guess she can do whatever she wants. As a wiggy, there's always a wig in our repertoire that we need to but burn. That Cher, even, that would be yours. That wasn't even a good wig, though, right? It, it, was like, it looked like a, you know, like a Hollywood Boulevard cheap yeah, costume wig. Yeah, yeah. Gotta love her. Okay, Gotta so our her. next category with George is style stealers. <laughs> now, our first offenders are Jessica Simpson and Kim Solciak, and they're wearing the same is that Alexander McQueen? No, it's Roberto Cavalli. Roberto Cavalli, Cavalli. dress, but then they're both pregnant. So who's wearing it best? Okay, so they both, they look lovely in this dress. My problem with this dress is it's, it's meant for a girl who's almost showing. Like you want to hide your pregnancy. Not, this is just too much pregnancy. Like remember when Beyonce wore that beautiful Lambon gown? That right there. If she wasn't doing that, we wouldn't know that she was pregnant. So these girl, this is, so this dress is more for someone who's not quite showing. Yes. So I'm gonna have to give it to Kim because she's not showing as Got much. Got But when you're pregnant like that, you want to define your breasts and show your shape to show that you're pregnant. Otherwise you just look like you ate too much. Yeah, or it's hands. Okay, so our next categories, uh, our next style stealers are uh, Kiki Palmer and Taylor Swift. And Taylor Swift, yes. So they're wearing this dress, this printed dress that has chandeliers on it from Ted Baker. And really this pretty. is kind of a, this is a tough one. I don't like the tights with Taylor's outfit. I think they're too dark. Heavy. And, yeah, they're too heavy. They should be maybe a sheer, sheer or nothing. Yes. And then, you know, the fit is better on Taylor, but I love Kiki's bare legs. and gotcha. Kiki's just so cute. Yes, She's she such is a cutie cute. that I, I have to choose Kiki for sure. Okay, our last category is best dressed lineup. And and so we're going to take a look at the best dressed ho uh, actresses in Hollywood lately on the red carpet. And I think you're in agreement with this, too. Let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going to take you guys over to the, it was all at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Yes. All right, and first we have Elizabeth Banks. She's in Antonio Berardi in this beautiful strapless peplum gown. Peplums are all the rage for spring and summer. They yes. accentuate your waist and hide a belly and yeah. give you hips, etc. And the beautiful Kerry Washington, who just... The nude is, like, it, gorgeous. It's fabulous. It's Calvin Klein. It's minimal. It's, you know, these oversized looks are very big for spring and summer. Yes. And Carrie can do no wrong. Yes. And then there's Kate Hudson, finally. I love that dress. It's great, right? It's sparkly. It's Jenny Packham. The Beautiful. hair and makeup is flawless. I mean, this is something that M Michelle Obama would wear. It's sparkly, but it's covered up and her, you know, it's very, very elegant. Perfect it's very, for the event. It's very beautiful. And you are very cute. Yeah. It was so nice to meet you. George, everybody.
you for a thorough investigation. Thank and you, you guys, Fashion you. Police airs Friday nights at 10 on E. Up next, one lucky audience member today will get a chance at $5,000 in our money booth. Don't miss Go to wendyshow.com to watch must-see moments, sign up for my newsletter, and get links to free stuff. That's wendyshow.com. Go today. What are you waiting for? The show is right around the corner, and we're celebrating all month long. So right now, it's time for one lucky audience member to come down and step into the Wendy 5000 money booth for a shot at grabbing $5,000. And today's audience member is... Sorry. And, and look, you put this around, uh huh. Tie it in the back. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, tie it around. You're gonna put all your money inside of the pockets in the front of this. See, we make it nice and easy for you. Now, what I want you to do as you're tying, walk around to the door. John Anderson's gonna open the money booth door for you. Oh, two trung. There's five thousand dollars in there. Okay. There's only one rule, two trung. Your hands have to stay above your waist. Above your waist. No, no picking up on the floor. Okay, Above the waist. Put in my pocket. Yes, put the money in your pocket. Okay, let's put 30 <laughs> seconds on the clock. Ready? <laughs> Set. Go! Too strong. Use your pocket. Too strong. Use your pocket. at first. I don't know. I'm so excited. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Listen, when we come back, we're going to find out how much money Two Trung won. And the legendary TV star Meredith Baxter is here as well. So keep it here. Wendy, congratulations on your fierce, fabulous, and fun 500th show. Say that fast three times. Closed captioning for the Wendy Williams show is brought to you by... Cameras, places, please. It is really incredible. I didn't know what Two Trunks technique was, and I figured she'd walk away with two bucks. The woman grabbed one thousand two hundred and twenty-five dollars in our money booth. Fantastic. Anyway, uh, moving along. So our next guest played one of our favorite TV moms in the 80s sitcom Family Ties. But listen, while she was making us laugh on screen, off screen, she was dealing with some really serious family drama in her personal life. She wrote all about it in her New York Times best-selling book. It's called Untied. Please welcome to our show, Meredith Baxter. <laughs> Your, your skin coloring, the hair, and the whole bit. Some of it's makeup, you yeah, know. Yeah, no, makeup is good. Yeah. Makeup is good, too. Thank you. So we all remember you as Elise Keaton. Thank you. Thank you. And um, do, you, do you have happy memories from the uh, years of family ties? 
So many, so many. You know, it, it was an oasis for me. I, I loved being able to, it was a safe place for me to go, and I happened to love those people. I think one of the reasons our show was so popular is that we had a real love and regard and respect for each other. And I think you can see it on the screen, and when the cameras weren't rolling, we were laughing and playing and wrestling. And, and if you recall, like tabloid uh, fodder at that particular time, we never read about, you know, discourse behind the scenes mm -hmm. of, of your show. The Keaton family was, uh, was seeming like a perfect family, a fun family. Yeah. Be involved with. So, is it true that you and Michael J. Fox uh, commuted, carpooled to work <laughs> at, at one point? Like yeah, the first he was a wee show? lad when we started the show. You know, um, yeah, he lived just not too far from me, and I don't remember why he wasn't driving. Maybe he wasn't. He was like 15, um, <laughs> and uh, so. I said, well, I'll pick you up at a certain time. I pulled into the back alley behind his apartment. I honked the horn. That's an L.A. Him thing with the back alley. Running out. Well, I guess it is. Yeah. yeah. No, there are a lot of that driving back alleys in L.A. It's not, it's, there are not a whole lot here on the East Coast. That's the back, right. The back alley. Thing. Yeah. No back alleys. Well, not We're driving We're known ones. for them. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, I pulled in. <laughs> And expected him to come running out at the toot of the horn. And what I hear is the shower go on. It's like, oh, I forgot. He's, he's like a teenage boy. So, but it became a, a, a wonderful relationship. Yeah. I, you know, I, I duly love him. Aww. Now, good guy. in your book, Untied, you explain a lot of the different things that were going on behind the scenes in mm -hmm. your life. While the, the Family Ties was an oasis, at home there were some serious issues. Uh, you were forced to come out of the closet on the Today Show. Talk about that a well, bit. I, 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 whoa. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I had gone on a lesbian cruise, which is a good indication right there, don't you think? And with, with your girlfriend? Yeah. And, uh, okay, and I, and I had, all my friends and family knew that I decided I was a lesbian, that I, that was pretty clear to me. And, uh, um, but, but no one knew in terms in the in the film industry. I thought, you know, I've got to keep that s secret because I just thought, who? What are they going to say about America's favorite mom? Yeah. And you know, as yeah. you know, and there's, I'm sure there's a lesbian mom in the, our audience somewhere. Yes. So you know that it 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 certainly is. It, it they coexist. So, but they so, did not but for you, me. But when you went on the Today Show, um, you were forced to out yourself because apparently. Well, when the, I came off the cruise, there was. Uh, I, um, you were talking in terms of uh, your marriages and right. abuse. Talk about that a little bit. Well, do you know, I think when, um, when you're raised, when your kids, anyone grows up and uh, there was a lot of uh, rejection and abandonment, emotional abandonment at my house growing up. My, my mother had us call her by her first name because she didn't want to be associated with us as her, our mother because she wanted to be an actress. She didn't know what she was causing, oh. but it created a horrible thing yeah. for, for me personally anyway. Um, and so I thought I was unloved and uncared for and I had no self-esteem and consequently, I didn't know what it felt like to be a loved person. So consequently, I didn't recognize a real relationship when I saw it. Got it. Well, I'm old enough to remember Bridget Loves Bernie. Uh -huh. Now, I know that, that that show was only on for one season. I remember as a little girl watching it in the 70s, um, you and Bernie ended up getting married. Yeah. In real life. Wow. Uh, now, how many years were you married to Bernie? Um, uh, his name is David Bernie. David um, Bernie. Um, we were married 15 years. Wow. And... He is the father of how three, three, three of, of my your, five, three of your five children, um, and you talk about abuse mm -hmm. in the book. Was that mental abuse or physical abuse? Ran the gamut. Yeah. Okay. It was all there, but if any of you know this, it doesn't. There doesn't have to be a lot of physical abuse, because if it's that car just played once or twice, yes. it's a fast move, yeah. and you're going okay. Yeah. Okay, you know, it doesn't have to happen a lot. But as I, in, uh, I've talked to so many women who have gone through domestic abuse, and I speak at uh, many events about domestic abuse, what I find is that uh, it's the corrosive effect of emotional and verbal abuse yes. that is so devastating. It takes you down. Someone of normally strong fiber and confidence was this, can be worn to dust. Was it going on in front of friends, maybe on the set sometimes, and in front of your kids, this abuse? From him? Wow. Um, 
So you ended up divorcing? Yeah. And then years later, uh, you were forced to come out of the closet on the Today Show. Talk about that a well, bit. Well, I... I, I whoa. <laughs> Um, I had gone on a lesbian cruise, which is a good indication right there, don't you think? And with, with your girlfriend? Yeah. And, uh, okay, and I, and I had, all my friends and family knew that I decided I was a lesbian, that I, that was pretty clear to me. And, uh, um... But, but I, no one knew in terms in the in the film industry. I thought, you know, I've got to keep that s secret because I just thought, who? What are they going to say about America's favorite mom? Yeah. And you know, as yeah. you know, and there's, I'm sure there's a lesbian mom in the, our audience somewhere. Yes. So you know that it 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 certainly is. It, it they coexist. So, but they so, did not but for you, me. But when you went on the Today Show, um, you were forced. To out yourself because apparently well, when the I came off the cruise, there was uh, uh, there was a bunch of tabloid uh, questionnaires. Um, people were plaguing my my manager. They wanted to know, you know, what's going on. We have pictures. Wow. We want to talk about it. Yeah. I had been at the receiving end of uh, tabloid questions before, yes. and they take a, something that has a seed of truth and distort it and make it's cruel and it involves other people. <sighs> and I couldn't let that happen. So you had your team book you on the Today Show. So well, you it wasn't my idea, but I followed good advice. Yes. Yeah. And yes, I went on the Today Show and sat there opposite Matt Lauer and thought I was setting myself on fire on national television. Yeah. Because who has to do that? Well, I mean, why should anybody have to do but that? But it's always, but at least, it, you know, you took control of something yeah. that could have otherwise been, you know, in the hands of tabloids, which is great. By the way, how did you, uh, how did you realize that you were gay? Were you gay all along and you were just trying to hide that by being married? Well, here's the thing. I, I don't know. But because I said, I, I didn't know what a re real relationship looked like. Yeah. I didn't know what, how you were supposed to be. I had never seen a healthy relationship. And I really felt, because the way I functioned, that mm -hmm. I was just looking to hold in any port in a storm. And, uh, you know, so if you're treading water and just trying to keep your head above water and not drown, if you find something that feels like a life raft gotcha. and you're holding on, you don't pay a lot of attention to what sex it is. Yes. Gotcha. You know? So you're in a relationship now, you you yeah. and your girlfriend, you look similar to, oh. to one another. We have a picture. Yeah. I'm glad that you're happy now. This is a really interesting book, you guys. You need to Nancy. pick this up. It's called Untied. Yes. The author and actress Meredith Baxter is here. The book is out in paperback now, and everyone in our studio audience is going home with theirs. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, it's time for today's audience giveaway. Hit it! Perfect. All right, let's see what it is. I know it's something good. This is a Chi Deep Brilliance hair styling iron. You can use it. It's a new half an inch curling model. It curls, it flips, it straightens all texture hair. Plus, it blocks the humidity and locks in moisture so you'll have a nice smooth finish. And the Chi retails for $110, but studio audience, that's yours. Three. And that's not all. Hold this, darling. You're all also going home with La Vanilla gift set. You're getting everything from the signature fragrance and body wash, the candle, all the La Vanilla products are 100% natural. This gift is worth $120, but you get it for free. I want to thank today's guest and my co-host, tomorrow on the show from the Soup and NBC's community, the hilarious Joel McHale will be here. And from the new Lifetime show, The Conversation TV show, Amanda Dacat... Da Decadne will be here as well. I love you for watching today. We're going to send another Wendy audience member into the uh, money booth. It's going to be a great show, and I hope you'll be watching tomorrow. Bye-bye.